Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. Today we are gonna be looking at the newest version of EcoFlow's smart generator. This is actually the dual fuel option, meaning you can run it off of two fuel sources. On the side, you have a propane inlet, and with the included adapter cable, it just snaps right in. There are no tools needed. Now you also have the ability to run it off gasoline by putting gasoline in the tank up here. Now this generator is rated at a full 1800 watts continuous output when you're running it on gasoline or a full 1600 watts if you're running it off propane. Now they call this generator the smart generator because it has smart app connectivity with EcoFlow's ecosystem. So whenever you connect this up, you have the ability to turn on and off the generator with the smart app because this has a built-in electric start. You can also adjust the power output. You can turn on and off eco mode and you have the ability to adjust some other settings. Now, the other thing that's really cool about this generator is it has a dedicated DC output. Most inverter generators have AC ports on the front so you get AC power out, but this one is designed to charge their larger power stations specifically. They have their home backup solution. They have their Delta Pro and Delta Max power stations. With the included DC to DC charging cable, you can charge those at up to 1800 watts output. And it's actually rated to be 10% more efficient because it's DC power output instead of using an AC inverter. Now we have to get this thing ready for its first start. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into that process. And then we're gonna be doing some extensive testing on it to see how it performs on both propane and gasoline. So we first wanna remove this access panel. You can go ahead and turn these with a flat head screwdriver. And then we're gonna take this and pull on it and it will come right off. Now, once you take off the main panel, you can see all the different components. You have your engine here. This is the Rado R80N-I. This is a very common brand of engine used in these inverter generators. Down here, you have your oil fill. This is where you can fill up the oil and empty the oil. Right here, you have your air filter and air box. You have your electrical connections for your battery, which is for the electric start. And then you actually have your battery up here, which is a lithium ion battery. Now you have your propane inlet. Remember this is dual fuel. And what's really cool, because the electric start and the auto start function, you have these two stepper motors for the automatic choke and automatic throttle. So the next step in the process is actually adding oil to the engine. Now this calls for four cycle, 10 weight, 40 engine oil. Now this is what I use for my Honda four wheeler. Now what I like to do is I mark where the current oil is at and we're gonna add 380 milliliters or 0.38 liters to the engine. So if we track where this is at, we can actually see how much we've added. Now you can use basically any engine oil as long as it's 10 weight 40. Now the goal is not to make a huge mess here. I have some gloves, the oil funnel and a rag. Let's see if we can get this going. Okay, so I've added about 380 milliliters to the engine. I'm just gonna kinda let it drip through, and then we'll go ahead and put the oil cap on. Now, once you finish topping it off, you can see the oil is sitting right at the rim here. That's when you know you've added all the oil, and you can go ahead and put the dipstick cover back in. Now, I like to go a little farther to protect my engine, and I purchased these aftermarket oil dipsticks. Now, it has a magnet on the end that attracts any extra shards of metal that may be left over from the manufacturing process. Basically, when you start this up, this helps to catch those so it doesn't damage your engine. Now, I'll put this down in the video description. It's very cheap. Basically, this is compatible with Yamaha generators, Predator generators, WEN generators, and also this one here. Now that we have engine oil in here, I do not have the battery connected up and I don't have fuel in here, but I do like to cycle that oil around just so it coats everything inside. So what you can do is you can grab the pull start and just pull it slightly two or three times, and this just coats the inside of the engine with the oil so it's all coated before it starts up. Now the next step is to hook up the battery for the electric start. So we're gonna take off both of these here. Now these are SAE connections. They're fairly easy to connect up and you just plug it in and then just make sure everything's kind of just tucked out of the way and we should be good. Now we're gonna go ahead and take the access panel and we're gonna put it back on. So you basically just slide this up in here and you kind of line it up and then you can feel it snap in all around and then you take your screwdriver and lock it in place and there's just one last thing that I want to show you guys now the next thing I want to show you guys is this switch here this controls the battery and the fuel shut off and if it's at the top then that means it's at storage and both are turned off but if I turn it over just slightly you can see that it actually turns on the battery and now the display is active and if I want to turn on the gasoline fuel valve you turn this all the way open. Now, basically, if you're running it, this is where you wanna have it with gasoline. 
Now what happens is if you want to put this into storage and you want to run the carb dry, you basically turn this all the way up until the first off switch. That will shut off the fuel. You can let this run until the carburetor dries out and it shuts off. And then when you want to turn off the actual battery and display, you flip it up to the top. Now in the box, you get the owner's manual and warranty card. This does come with a two year warranty or a 500 hour engine time warranty. You get the DC to DC charging cable, the propane adapter, and a few tools to help you get everything going. Okay guys, that's everything you have to do to get this thing running. Now the MSRP on this is $15.99. And you can currently pick this up for $12.99 on their website. So you can actually save $300 because it's on sale. So I'll include the link down in the video description if you guys want to check it out. Let's go ahead and take this outside. We're going to be doing propane testing first. Let's see how it does. Okay, guys, I got everything ready here. The generator's outside. I just connected up to the propane. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to charge up my Delta Max using the AC output first. This is sitting at 0%, and I want to see how much energy or how much propane it takes to get it up to 100% and how long. So I weighed the bottle beforehand so we know what the weight is and how much propane we use. Let's go ahead and try the electric start and see what happens. Okay, so it didn't want to start up using propane for the first start. Let's go ahead and try the pull start and see what happens. Okay guys, after giving it some time to settle down and warm up, it looks like we're getting 1,450 watts out of the generator on propane. Remember the max power is 1,600 watts and we're seeing a little bit less than 1400 on the Delta Max. Now, I did have to adjust the settings a bit. I had to adjust the generator to 1500 watt output instead of 1800 watts, and I had to adjust the Delta Max to 1400 watts instead of 1800 watts, or basically it would just cycle the full throttle and come down. Now, I'm at high elevation. I'm sitting right around 4,500 feet above sea level, so that's probably the case here. So you will have to adjust this a little bit depending on your location. Okay guys, we're coming to the end of the test here. The Delta Max is sitting at 97%. It's slowed down charging significantly. It's sitting at around 300 watts input right now. So I actually flipped the generator over to eco mode and it's only putting out about 59 to 60 decibels, so much quieter. Now we're gonna go ahead and let this finish up and then we'll see how much propane it used during this full charge cycle. Okay guys, the Delta Max is full and because we don't have the DC to DC cable up, uh, it's not going to auto shut off, so it just barely finished. Let me go ahead and show you guys. You can see that it's currently sitting in eco mode. Now watch this. You can actually swipe this to turn the engine off, and then you push confirm. And that turns the engine off. So I want to go ahead and see how much this weighs now. Now I started the test at 35.2 pounds. So we're going to weigh it on my super accurate house scale here. Okay, we're sitting at 33.2 pounds. So we used exactly two pounds of propane to fill up the Delta Max. But why are you doing that? Okay guys, the second test just ended. I really like that this auto shuts off on the DC testing. Um, so I've unhooked the propane bottle. Now remember we started this at 33.2 pounds and we used two pounds of propane when we used the AC output. Let's go ahead and see what this is sitting at now. It's sitting at 31.4 pounds. So we did use less propane. We used 1.8 pounds of propane versus two. So it does appear to be more efficient when you are using the DC output on the generator. Okay guys, we're gonna go ahead and do the third run test on the dual fuel generator. This time we are gonna be running off gasoline. Now this is ethanol free fuel. Luckily I have that in my area. It just works a lot better on carbureted engines. Now during this test, we're gonna be seeing how much fuel it takes up to fill up the Delta Max. So one full charge cycle sitting at 0%. And we are gonna be using the DC to DC charging method because it is more efficient. So we're gonna fill up the gasoline, see if it auto starts and then we'll see how long the test goes and if we can get it full off one half gallon. Okay, so we're gonna see if this will auto start uh, with the DC cable. So what you have to do is turn it to on and then run. This screen turns on. 
it's actually showing 46%. So that sounds about right for putting a half gallon in there. So now when we turn on the Delta Max, it should try to auto start. Okay guys, we're coming to the end of the gasoline test. Now remember we put a half gallon in there and the generator is currently estimating about 4% left in the tank and the Delta Max is sitting at 98% state of charge. So it looks like a half gallon will actually get you one full charge cycle on the Delta Max. Okay guys, the system just shut off. Now I was kind of curious what would happen first. Would the gasoline generator run out of fuel or would the power station hit 100% and turn off the generator? Remember, whenever you have the DC to DC cable connected up, it has a smart connectivity and the power station will tell the generator when to turn on and off. Now the Delta Max is sitting at 100%, so it does appear that this shut off a little bit before running out of fuel. So I still think there's a little bit of fuel left in this. So putting a half gallon of gas into the generator gave us one full charge cycle with the Delta Max. So pretty impressive. Okay guys, let's see how much fuel is left in this. I'm just gonna let it run dry. Okay, just to follow up here, the generator has been running for 45 minutes ever since I started it, and that was with the fuel gauge when it was sitting at 0%. So basically there's quite a bit of fuel left over even when it shows 0%. So when we charged up the Delta Max, when we thought we used a half gallon of fuel, we definitely used less because it's been running for 45 minutes ever since we stopped that test. Okay, so we finished all the testing. Let's go ahead and talk about the actual results. Now we're gonna talk about max power output, fuel consumption numbers, the noise levels, and we're gonna talk about the differences that I saw between gasoline and propane. Now let's talk about max power first. Now we saw a total of 1480 watts peak on propane and we saw a total of 1680 watts peak on gasoline. Now that's around 92 to 93 percent of the rated output and remember I'm at 4500 feet above sea level and you're supposed to lose around two to three percent of your power per thousand feet. So keep in mind the higher elevation you are the less performance you're going to see and the lower elevation or the closer you are to sea level you will see closer to the rated output on this. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward with the fuel consumption numbers that I found during my testing. Now just be aware these are rough estimates, they're not exact. So starting with the propane, I basically measured the full tank before the testing started and I connected up the solar generator to the AC output. Now I started with the Delta Max at 0% and charged it all the way up to 100% and during that test with the AC output it burned a total of 2 pounds of propane. Now I went ahead and did the same thing on the DC output. I started with the total weight of the tank and then ran the test from 0% up to 100% state of charge and it burned 1.8 pounds of propane out of the tank's volume. So you can see that the DC output is more efficient than the AC output by about 10% or so. Now in order to calculate the total run times that you'd get out of a full tank of propane, you can actually take the total weight of the tank and then the actual tank weight itself, which on the top of a propane bottle, it usually have a number and then TW. For example, on my tank, it was 16.6 .6 TW. And then you subtract that from the total weight of the tank and that leaves you with the weight of the propane. And basically doing the calculations, you can get around 10 charge cycles on the Delta Max out of one 20 pound bottle of propane. So pretty good numbers there. Now moving on to the gasoline, it was a little bit more crude. I basically put a half gallon of gasoline in here just to see how far it would go. And I was actually able to charge the Delta Max fully up off a half gallon and the front display was showing 0%. So I thought I could get around one charge cycle off a half tank here. But it ends up being that I ran the generator for about 45 minutes, even though it said 0% on the front. So there is quite a bit of a reserve tank left over in the generator, even though the display shows 0%. So kind of with rough estimations, I think I could get around 2.5 to 3 charge cycles on a full tank of gas with the Delta Max.
Now on the next set of tests, I wanna figure out how loud this was on performance mode and on eco mode. Now on performance mode, this is putting out max power. The RPMs of the engine are sitting at 5,000 RPMs and it's at full throttle. So you're gonna get the most noise on performance mode. At 23 feet, I was able to measure 65 decibels on both propane and gasoline. So uh, you don't have a noise difference between the two fuel types and you will be able to hear this through your windows and walls. So I'm guessing your neighbors will also be able to hear this running if they are close. Now on eco mode, it drops back the RPMs quite a bit and it only puts out around 59 to 60 decibels at 23 feet. So just be aware, performance mode is gonna be much louder than it is on eco mode. Now I wanna go ahead and discuss some of the differences I noticed when running this on propane versus gasoline, some of the pros and cons of each one. Now with gasoline, some of the pros, well, it puts out more power. We saw more wattage output from gasoline and it's much easier or convenient to go fill up a gas tank. You have gas stations really close around, most people do. So I'd say that's definitely uh, the pros for gasoline. Now, some of the cons with gasoline, well, uh, the actual storage of gasoline is a little bit more dangerous than propane. Also, gasoline will uh, spoil over time and you wanna make sure that you go out and purchase ethanol free fuel for these smaller engines that have carburetors uh, so you don't gunk that up. So some of the cons there. The other thing is the exhaust smell on gasoline gets all in your clothes. Your whole backyard will smell like this exhaust. And you know, if you happen to spill, it kind of stinks and gets all over. So gasoline isn't the best that way, but you do get more power output from it. Now, when moving on to propane, the pros and cons. Well, the pros of propane are you don't get any spills um, or leaks. With this adapter, it just snaps right in and it's very clean. Um, the other benefit is the exhaust smell on propane is super clean. Uh, you get a very fine hint of propane smell, but you don't get it in your clothes. Your whole backyard doesn't stink. It seems to be much cleaner burning on propane, which is probably better for the environment as well. And the fact that you can actually store propane without an expiration date. The only thing you have to worry about is your tank being certified. It does expire after a certain amount of years, but storing propane is safer and lasts longer. Now, some of the downsides to propane, well, you don't get as much power output. So if you want the same amount of power as gasoline, you usually have to go to a larger generator. And the fact that it's harder to get refilled, you have to go out to a special site to get your propane refilled. So those are some of the pros and cons to gasoline versus propane. I'd love to get your guys' feedback. Throw a comment down below if you've used um, a generator, gas or propane, which one do you prefer and why? I'd love to hear feedback from you guys. Now there are actually four different ways that you can start up this generator. You have the pull start on the side, you have the electric start button on the front. If you have the app open, you can actually swipe at the bottom to start this remotely. And if you have a supported power station connected up with the DC to DC charging cable, the communication pins in there will actually tell this when to start up and stop based on what you have set up on the power station. So if you have the Delta Pro, for example, if you want this to automatically kick on and charge the Delta Pro at 0% or at 5% state of charge, it will turn on and then automatically turn off when the power station is full or at whatever percentage you set in the app. Now, when looking at this generator and comparing it to other generators on the market, EcoFlow basically has three arguments of why you should choose this one over the others. Now, the first point is that this is a dual fuel option. You have the option to run it off propane and gasoline. The second point is that this offers real-time monitoring and app control. You have the smart LCD on the front and you have app connectivity. Most other generators do not have that functionality. And the third argument from them is that this offers a automatic backup system for their larger EcoFlow products. For example, if you have the Delta Pro, the Delta Max, or their home backup solution, you can basically use this as an additional power source other than solar and grid power. So if your power goes out and you don't have solar available, you can use this to charge up your system. Now, of course, there are other options that are more affordable, but they don't offer as many features here. Now, the whole purpose of this video is to give you guys an honest review and basically tell you guys the performance of this product so you guys can make an educated decision on if this one is right for you. Now, I will have a product link down in the video description if you guys wanna check this out. This is currently on sale. If you guys liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.